Welcome to the top 10 best fan games of 2022. There was a bunch of awesome fan games this year. I played so many and these are my top 10 of the year. So kicking off this list, we have Pokemon Eternal Forest, which is an absolutely beautiful fan game made in PSDK. And it's set in the Kanto region in a little bit in the future, not too sure how far in the future, but you're under certain characters like red, green, blue, and they're like slight redesigns look so so good they're so fitting like blue just looks absolutely insane the game also has a bunch of fakemon like the fakemon starters oh man i love the water squid Mwah. had to pick that 100 percent but unfortunately the game isn't finished yet it's a demo at the moment but it goes up to vermilion so you go through pallet town viridian pewter city you know cerulean get to viridian and there's a lot of content here to actually like meet team rocket and stuff and it is really interesting just to see how kanto slightly changed and whatnot I'm really looking forward to the future of this game and just seeing the updates come because it is so interesting. Like I like playing through fan games that are like set in the same region as games we've already played. Like for example this in Kanto, but in a little different setting like in the future and things have changed or new Pokemon and whatnot, new story. It's just so, so interesting to me and that's one of my favorite things in fan games. So definitely give this game a try or at least follow their socials and keep up to date with everything that's coming. So when the game does get completed, you can just jump onto it right away because it is so, so good. The Pokemon Eternal Forest is something definitely to look out for and I really did enjoy playing this game. So for number nine, we have Pokemon Adventures Red, Green, Blue, Yellow Chapter, which I believe has been renamed to Special Chapters. I'm not too sure on that, but this is a continuation of Pokemon Adventures Red Chapter, the ROM hack, which was a very, very long, amazing ROM hack. And now we're going to continue that into fan games with PSDK. So continuing on Red Adventure, he goes to the Ore region where he's going to run into Wes and Shadow Pokemon. And it is so, so awesome. When you boot the game up as well, you got voice acting for the game, which is so sweet. There's not too much, but it looks cool. And the, the title screen, like the intro animation, absolutely amazing. I'm really excited to see uh, updates to this game and what more is going to happen. And then we also get chapters for blue and yellow. And I assume we're going to get green in the future as well. But obviously because the game isn't completed and there's a lot of content to uh, still come. Um, we've only got a, few, a little bit, a little taste of what's to come. But we've got Blue's chapter, which is basically how she started off, I mean, again, kidnapped from Kanto. And then we've got Yellow's chapter, which is very interesting as well, because I do like Yellow as a character. But the main important thing for me is Red and continuing that journey from the adventure ROM hack, which was so long, so good, because so much happened in that game. And obviously the fan game is now continuing on that story. At the end of the ROM hack, got taken down by Bruno the Elite Four and our Pikachu ran to go find Yellow. So it's, it's really interesting all the events that's going to unfold and I cannot wait for more updates for this game. But right now it's definitely worth a check just to see what's to come and a little taster of um, the future of this uh, series. So for number eight, we have Pokemon Soul Stones, which is an absolutely fantastic game. Very story driven. So if you guys are not into the heavy narration, this might not be for you, but I do recommend giving it a go and just reading all that dialogue because there is a lot of dialogue in this game. But the story is so, so good. You, so, you go on such a wild roller coaster ride, and by the end of it, during the post game, you're like, what is going on? The story is a little bit complex at times, but it is just so interesting. And just all the events that unfold is just so, so cool. Basically, you're a secret agent, and you're sent from the future to the 21st century to find the Soul Keepers, who have these Soul Stones, obviously, the name of the game, and they're linked to um, legendary mythical Pokemon. And as you can imagine, things don't always go to plan and you'll start to discover some things and you're like oh why am i doing this this shouldn't be happening and just it gets insanely good also the game has a bunch of regional uh, pokemon which looks so cool like one of the first ones you encounter will be an electric chimchar that looks fantastic and the game has so many um custom megas as well like a uh, mega serena looks so so cool the uh, Chimchar, like I mentioned, you get like a Mega Infernape that looks so cool. It's like sitting in a cloud. Absolutely amazing. Soul Stones is a very, very good game. But like I said, it is just a lot of reading, uh, heavy narration, and it is going to take you a long time to play through. But like I said, it is, it's so worth it. Some of the battles, though, in the post game are not really in your favor. They are very, very difficult. I struggled with some of the final battles, but obviously. I'm not that great, my team probably wasn't the best, so if you guys um, obviously play a bit better than me, you won't have too much trouble. But the game is so, so good. The region as well to explore is so interesting. And then when you get to the post game, even more to explore and there's just, it gets wild. I, like, I, I can't go into too much detail because I'll spoil things, but like play through the game and you're like, when you're playing through it, you'll be like, oh my God, the story just gets better and better and better. And you get into the post game, you're like, what is going on? How is this happening? It's, it's amazing. 
So please do check out Soul, Soul Stones. So for number seven, we have Pokemon Edelweiss Chronicles, which got an update this year and it was so, so good. But oh man, it had to end at the worst place possible. The, the story was really starting to pick up and then bam, end of demo. So I'm desperately waiting for the next update. But I think currently, I think it was five or six gyms there were. There is a lot of content here still to play through, some cool side quest dungeons to explore. I love, love the gym leaders in this game. If you don't know, the gym leaders are themed after um, certain Pokemon. So I won't spoil too many, but for example, the first gym leader um, looks a bit like a Cypher. And it is so, so awesome because I'm just excited to see the rest of the gym leaders. Hopefully the Elite Four are themed like that, the Champion. Uh, also, this game has some awesome, awesome Fakemon. There's like a sponge type and um, the sponge Pokemon I got on my team is an absolute beast. I think it's called like Phyto, Phyto Ponge, Ponge. It's so, so cool. And the regionals, the regionals in this game are mwah, mwah, the Rose Raid. Oh, absolutely perfection. The Rose Raid is exactly what I want out of a regional Rose Raid. It was so good. You get like a regional Lucario, Luxray. I caught a Pharisee that is super, super cute as well. But this game, so awesome. I cannot wait for it to be finished. And if you guys are just starting this game at the start, when you do your choices, I believe the starter Pokemon Karami, which is a brand new Pokemon, depending on your choices will be a different type like um, mine is um, psychic dark and when you progress through the game it will um, evolve obviously obviously Pokemon evolve but it will become a little bit different but the same you have to just um, obviously play for yourself also Edelweiss Chronicles has a like a food mechanic so if you run out of food you obviously faint so there's a way to like just like buy food or find food yourself and just start eating it and just replenish your stamina so um, you can actually turn that off though in a future, but I think it's, I recommend keeping it on. It's not that bad at all, honestly. So um, just makes the game a bit more, uh, a bit more difficult, a bit more survival aspect to it. So Edelweiss Chronicles, definitely a game I think you should all check out. So for number six, we have Pokemon and the Last Wish 2, which is a sequel to Pokemon and the Last Wish. So obviously play the first game first before this, because this game is uh, set three years after the events of the first game, because the first game kind of left on a little bit of a cliffhanger, some unanswered questions, and this game obviously goes into that and um, answers those questions, and it is really, really awesome. But for a sequel, the game is bigger and better, and that's exactly what you want. There's so many more Fakemon to uh, find this time, and they look so, so awesome, because the first game had a Marwal and a Sableye, and I believe this time you got those back, you got a Weasel, you got a Wooper, a Spiritomb, a Cacturn, uh, there's a whole bunch, which is awesome, and some of the Pokemon also get some costumes, and they look super cute. Little Torchic with bandana. Oh, so cute. So if you're looking for a game that's going to roughly take you about four or five hours, I definitely recommend checking this out. But obviously, like I said, play the first game first. And if you play the first game and this game, it's like a good 10, 12 hours of like gameplay right there. And you'll really enjoy the story because uh, what happens with certain things from the first game is so much more better than you expect. Because like playing the first game, you're like, oh, cool. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Like, why is that happening and then bam play the second game like oh it happened because of that and this is related to that oh my god it's so good so definitely check out the last wish one first and then play this game so for number five we have a far-fetched story which easily quickly became one of my favorite fan games it was so fun to play through i love fan games where you play as a pokemon and in this game you play as a far-fetch and you get like stranded on an island Going through the island, you meet some new characters and they are absolutely hilarious. Just the dynamic between different characters is so, so good. Such a well-written story and each character has like a certain ability that will help you progress through the island. Such an amazing game. I really recommend playing for this. It's quite short. I think you can probably finish in about like two, three hours, but it is a two, three hours that you will very much enjoy. If you're looking for a very funny, well-written story, check out this game. It is so, so good. And I just, I want more games where you play as a Pokemon because they are never not good, man. So for number four, we have Pokemon Real Idea System or Real Idea System. Not too sure how you want to pronounce it. But this is a completed fan game that I played in Spanish using a translator, but I believe someone's now translated in English. If you want to go check that out. Um, this game, absolutely fantastic. I love the character designs. The characters look so, so cool. The artwork that just appears for like some of the cutscenes looks gorgeous. I love it so much. I wish there was more Fakemon in this game because we get a handful of Fakemon. Um, the starters look absolutely brilliant. Uh, one gripe I do have is that you can use like a little like a uh, gacha system and you can um, get some really cool like skins of some Pokemon. Like you can get a uh, Nezuko uh, 
Mistrevious, which looks so cool. You can get a Danganronpa Teddy Ursa. But once they evolve, they lose the costume, which, oh, it sucks so much because I was so happy I got them. And then they evolved and I was like, oh, I just lost like my Nezuko Mistrevious. So that kind of sucks. But that aside, the story is just so interesting. It keeps you like hooked throughout the whole game. And there's some parts like to the climax where you have to use like certain mechanics. And it's just, it's so awesome that within a fan game. The side quests as well are really, really cool. Like they're really funny or just really interesting. Or they were super frustrating. There was one side quest that I did not like because it was really, really hard. It might be in easy in English, but when I played it, um, it was all like down to like using um, puns. And like, if you've ever played, uh, I believe it was Assassin's Creed. I think it was Valhalla. There was like a uh, side questy like mini game you can do where you do like basically insult your opponent and you should like do it in a, like a certain way. They basically brought that into the game and it was it was kind of it was cool, but it was very difficult to do. The puzzles in this game as well were really awesome. Again, um, the language barrier made it a little bit difficult at times, but it was so cool to see like these ideas come into the game. And I really hope in the future we get like more games like this that just kind of like think outside the box for some like elements like the puzzles and whatnot. But Reality A System is definitely a fan game I think everyone's got to play. And uh, I think I might in the future have to play it for again in English because um, just to get a better experience than I did with the translator because sometimes the translator was a little bit off and playing it for English will just make it, you know, a little bit nicer for me, I think. So for number three, we have Pokemon Void. This is such an underrated fan game. I don't see many people talking about this and I really wish they would. My biggest gripe with Void though is that it has level scaling. So it's a bit hard to grind and obviously if you're level like 50, the gym leader's gonna be 50 and you know, so on, so on. I never liked that in fan games because sometimes it just leads to a bit of unbalance. But apart from that, the game is phenomenal. You got such a great story, such great Fakemon. The graphics and all that, it just, it looks amazing and it's such a dark, hard game and I really recommend this game so much. Like I, I think it needs to get out there more because like I said, it's underrated. I don't see many people talking about this and it's a completed game. It's, it's so, so good. I need to see more people playing this game. I really do. It's so good. Please play Pokemon Void. So the number two spot, we have Pokemon Infinity. Now this game, absolutely wild. I cannot believe just everything that happened in this game. So you start off waking up, you know, with amnesia in a forest and the events that just play out, this game just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. And by the end, you're just like, what is going on? This is insane. <laughs> like I know I was at least. And the cool thing about this game as well is like you open up the map and you think, oh, this island's, you know, it's quite small. It's not gonna be a big game, but it really, it really is a big game. It's quite long. There's a lot to do. Like the island doesn't look that big, but there is so much to it. And I really recommend playing this game. If you're looking for a challenge as well, it does get like a bit more difficult. As, as the further you get into the game, the harder and harder it gets. Especially the post game, or maybe you want to say like post post game. I don't know how you want to put it. I don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say there is a lot of content here, a lot of side stuff, a lot of fakeymon. It just there's a lot to this game, and it is just absolutely insane. I gotta say the story is one of my favorite stories of any fan game I've played a hundred percent. So take that as you will. But Pokemon Infinity is a fan game. I think every single person that plays fan games needs to play. Please play this game. So my favorite fan game of 2022 is Pokemon Reborn. This year, this game got completed and I gotta say, it was absolutely fantastic. I started Reborn a couple of years ago and I struggled. Had a few issues with it and with every update, I struggled more and more and more. And this time I thought, with the game being completed, I'm gonna start a brand new game. I know what to expect going into Reborn. And this time it was so much more enjoyable. Uh, first up, you get just bam, presented with a option to put in some passwords. And these passwords are just so, so helpful. It makes the game so much more customizable and accessible to the casual player like myself. So I managed to go into Reborn, just um, still a bit of a challenge, but just managed to um, be able to play more casually and enjoy my time on Reborn than I did before. And if you guys want a challenge, obviously you don't have to put the passwords in. And if you want to make it harder, you can do that as well. But it wasn't just that that made the game much more enjoyable for me. It was also the community coming together to help me just like play through the game because let's be real reborn is very overwhelming there's so much content here and so much you can miss that i would recommend if you're going to play this game try find a guide you can watch my series if you want but i mean uh, i did a certain path but you might want to find out a different path if you want but at least find some things that you can do without spoiling the game for yourself because there's so much you can miss and there's so many events just around the game that you might want to you know just look around 
multiple times to try and find, but the, the community came together in the comments just telling me to go here, do that, do this, and it just made the game so much more enjoyable, and I actually honestly kind of miss that series so much, and I just think about Reborn so often, thinking, man, that game was so fun, just everyone coming together, playing through this like very long, dark, hard story, and it was just, it was so interesting to see like people's reactions to the to the game, to the story, like I don't want to spoil the story at all because it's, it's very long, so many characters, and um, I don't want to, you know, mess up and say something that's going to spoil something for you, but just seeing everything come together and how what, um, the choices people chose, oh, it was absolutely amazing, and i got to say, um, I'm just so happy a game like this got made, and um, I had such a, an amazing time with this, and uh, I know in the future, I'm probably going to get that experience once or twice more, I know with like rejuvenation that's going to be another thing, but a massive game like this, there's not too many of them, and i um, going to say Reborn, I'm going to miss waiting for it to be finished, but I'm going to miss Reborn so much, but maybe I'll do another playthrough in the future, going down a different path, it's just so enjoyable, i got to say Reborn, absolutely well deserving of like the best fan game of 2022, <laughs> definitely up there with best fan game of all time, and um, yeah, really did enjoy this game. So, what did you think? Let me know in the comments down below, what's your favourite fan game of 2022? And roll into 2023, because there's so many more fan games I want to play, and they look absolutely fantastic. Catch you next year. Peace.